Hello, our dear viewers. You're most welcome to the Destin Talk Show. It's your host, Frank Bibleman, once again. And I'm so privileged and I'm so excited over this new season that God has brought forth to us. Yeah, I want to thank God for the gift of life and for this fact that it's a Friday and it's a new grace and new masses and this is a new month that we are in. Yeah, it has just begun. Yeah, you have a right to declare over this new month. And allow me introduce to you the Destin Talk Show. And we are having two beautiful guests in the house. Yeah, and they are going to introduce themselves to us. But before they introduce themselves to us, I would like to ask you please to be sharing, subscribe, go to Raise Life Ministries, Luboa. Just invite your friends to like this page. Just invite your friends to share. Invite someone that you know. Please, you can create a, view, a viewing place anywhere of your, of your wish, with your family, with your friends. Please do it and let us spread this vibe of this vibrant message of Christ everywhere to the corners of the earth. Yeah, I want to thank God for the new season we are in and we are going to be letting you know more of the new season we are in because it is the fact that August is always our favorite month. Yeah, it's our favorite month. Do you believe in this? Yes, we do. Yeah, do you believe in this? Yes. Yeah, okay, we are going to have our two panelists introduce themselves to us, beginning from this side with a gentleman. Yeah, hello. Hello, everyone. This is Aine Peter Jeff. I welcome you to the Destiny Show. Welcome back from your work. I thank God for his blessing, the works of your hand. May God bless you. Wow, wow, wow. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, let's cross over to this side. Hi everyone, my name is Kamra Jose, your favorite kingdom baby, and yeah, let's get it. Oh my god, your favorite kingdom baby. baby. Your favorite kingdom baby. baby. Yeah, so we are going to hit off right, right now with our topic, and today we are going to talk about the scripture that we know from Psalms 119 verses 105. And it says that your word, yeah, let me have Jeff help me with it out and it says that this your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path so today this is our theme scripture and it, we are going to get our topic derived from this and we are going to talk about none other than how this word has been a light and a lamp to our feet in times of addictions so, I believe that every teen out there, every youth out there, you've had an addiction. We have many addictions. You may be addicted to your phone, that you can never use your phone to read the Bible. You can never use your phone to watch gospel songs, to watch gospel movies. Or you can never use even your phone to preach to someone, but you rather use your phone for pornography. You rather use your phone for things that are contrary to the word of God, to Things that are not even eligible to light up your word in the spirit. Uh huh. And there are many addictions. We have pornography, we have masturbation, we have everything. It may be listening to secular songs, it may be watching a lot of movies. We are going to interact with these people and you with you there. How this word of God has been a lamp and has lighted up our feet into coming back to the kingdom of God. And so I would like to begin from Mr. Jeff. Mr. Jeff. Yes. Briefly, I want you to read this scripture for us and translate it your way as far as the way it helped you to get out of addictions. Because this is a season whereby we need to have our spirits light up from such type of habits. Yeah. So, how has it helped you out? Uh, thank you, Musumba Frank. So, the scripture says that your word is a lamp to my feet. Hallelujah. Right. Mm. A lamp. A lamp gives out light. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. As a youth there, you need life as you walk in this journey of faith. You True. walk with, it, with Christ. Christ is the light. It, it continues and says, it says like this. And a light to my path. Hallelujah. So it comes back to you. It comes back to me. I should always have the word in my heart. 
The psalmist says, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. So I could read the word. You spare some time. Hmm? You spare some time for the word of God. You read the word. Hmm? You make sure that you, you fill your soul with the word. Hmm? So that whenever you walk, the light of God shines in you. Mm. The word of God speaks. Mm. It creates. Eh? It mm. creates. The word of God creates. Mm. So that word of Christ, I walk with it daily. I make sure that I read the word. Whenever I get time to seek wisdom, like in the fellowships, mm. I make sure I go to the pastor. Mm. Pastor, I've been troubling with oh, the too much love of money. Mm. Yeah, as a youth, you, you could love money. You have that love for money. True. So you you try all the things to, to, to make sure that you have some money in your pocket. Wow. But you feel like th there is some space that you look unto and you feel like money can't finish everything. Mm. Yeah. When you feel like money can't complete everything, you need some impactful friends in your life. Those mm. friends that can build you. Those friends that can can make you to go back to Christ because it, it profits nothing to eat all the word and then at the last time you lose your soul. Wow, so wow, wow. with the word, it makes you, because we are born of that, that seed that is, is mm. in us, it is not corruptible. Mm. You understand? Mm. So it is not corruptible. Whenever you may, whenever you look back, you are just wasting time. Mm. Uh, yeah, as a youth, you shouldn't even spare that time to waste, just look forward. Wow, 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 wow. Actually, among the things Jeff talked about, he talked of God's word lighting up, it being a lamp to him. Actually, he explained it better that the lamp gives out light. light. And he talked of money being an addiction. Actually, Jeff, you're right. Do you know that Kamara, money can also be an addiction to you? Yes, most definitely. Money is an addiction to mm -hmm. people. Uh, there are people who can't really do without money and they'll go to the last of their abilities to get money. Mm. And that does that means they won't discriminate what True. they're going to do to earn this money, to get mm. this money. So yeah, money is an addiction. Yeah. Actually, we do have people that probably end up ending up people's life because of money. You find someone at night moving with a hammer just to get money. You find someone turning around someone's neck just to grab a phone from him or her to sell it and have money. Actually, yeah, money can also be an addiction. And you can use God's word to read that this word is being a lamp to your feet by telling you that the love of money is the root cause to all evil. Yeah, so loving money a lot can be an addiction. Actually, it's a very big addiction to we as the youths. People end up not serving God to their full abilities because they've gotten businesses that are always occupying them up. So let me get to this side. Kamara. Yes, please. Yeah. How has this word been a lamp um, to your addictions? First of all, you're going to tell us what are some of the addictions that you've had you personally, not the addictions that you know, but that yeah addictions that personally you've dealt with and this word has been a lamp to you wow so i i've had so many addictions <laughs> like like i've had i've had a money addiction at some point though mm -hmm. not to the extent of killing someone <laughs> you know when you're living in the world i guess and you're not in the church okay come on mm. i guess it wasn't an extent of killing someone but it was an addiction to one yeah extent. but was to an extent of the two things somewhere. Not so? You know, yes. <laughs> yes, like, uh -huh. you're going to go to town and you're going to meet your friends with, like, the latest sports and mm. they have, like, the nicest shoes True. and the trendiest handbags and you're like, good, I want that. Mm. But you want that, but you're looking at a person who has a job mm. and, I mean, at some, at some point you're like, you know what, God, I know you can do this, but deep inside, mm. you know you're not choosing God. Mm. So some of the addictions I've had, I've had a money addiction, I've had an alcohol addiction, mm. I've had a drug addiction, like dealing with drugs. I've, I've, I've done it all. Like for those who know me, mm. it took it actually it took them a while to actually believe I was born again. Oh God. But let me just break this down for someone. Just mm. a side note. Mm. You don't have to be perfect to be born again. Wow. Because if it was like that, Jesus would have never made it to earth. But he came for all the imperfect people. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to tell 
the worst drug addict on earth, the worst alcohol addict on earth, that the reason Jesus came on this planet was because of you. Mm. And I believe what our, our verse says is the word of the Lord is the, the lamp of my feet and the light. No one would want to walk into a path that is totally dark. Like it doesn't make sense walking in a True. path that is dark. Mm. But if you have something like a light, like a torch, you're sure going to walk through that path. Mm. So I take this word as, you know what, God, at some point of my life, I'm not going to know what I want to do, what I'm going to do. But for as long as I have your word, I'm just going to light it into my path. And just like that, I'll know which way to take. Wow. So she has ever dealt with an addiction of drugs. Actually, it's troubling many people out there. I had a friend of mine. Yeah, actually, it's my sister that told me about this friend that for him, he has done everything. He has tried out gyming. He has tried out leaving his or her closest circle of people that drag him into this type of drugs. But actually, it has all refused. He has tried out gyming, eating proper food, but he can't do away with drugs. Meaning that you can do everything. You can avoid friends. You can avoid that circle that keeps you in this but the best way to avoid it actually it is with the word of god and she has dealt with an addiction of having that love for money and i don't know whether jeff has also had this addiction actually most of us we as youths we as teenagers and we as older people we've all had that addiction yeah jeff can you tell us which some of the addictions that you've dealt with in your heart that you've dealt with in your life and the word of God has pulled you out of these addictions and that probably can change a certain youth that has been having the same addiction that you ever had and that can totally change someone's life for good. So what are some of the addictions that you've had? So for me, I'll say I was that kind of person who could keep that greed, eh? keeping greed on the heart mm. and forgiving Mm. So, you somebody might do something in a jokingly way, mm. but you just keep it in your heart. But what I did, I could open up myself. Mm. At one time, you should open up yourself to those people that you trust. Mm. You open up yourself and that love, eh, love completes it all. So, wow. I had addictions, but you, you could... Keep yourself in the sacred place. Eh? Mm. You know, nothing is done in the sacred and is not put in the light. Yeah. So those addictions, you just find a way that that we, we are talking about the word of God being the lamp to your feet. So in that those addictions, there are those people. Nothing, nothing is new in the in this world. So whenever everything that you are passing through, hmm? everything that you are passing through. You, sh you, you just talk to those people, to those generals that have passed through that thing. You, you open up yourself, you talk to them openly so that you lose yourself. You come to that place, you open yourself and tell them everything that you are doing. So they redefine you with love. You, you find that you are comforted. You are not alone. Being alone is so bad. Wow. Yeah. So whenever you are alone you feel like you don't have friends mm. so an idle mind is a devil's work workshop yeah so when you don't fill yourself with a word in your head mm, that word that speaks that creates you mm. find yourself at times rejected but when you have the word you come into the fellowships you find yourself comforted and you are to the point you accept that i am a son of god I'm loved, I'm not rejected. So whenever you come to that point and you say, I'm a son of God, you mm. have to do what pleases your father, mm. what pleases God. You know his word, you come to that place. You know, when I do this, I'm not pleasing my father. When I do that, I'm pleasing my father. Wow, wow, wow. Actually, Jeff has had this addiction. He has talked about it, thank God, that... Keeping a grudge on your heart. Actually, many people deal with that. That someone keeps that grudge upon their heart that they can't even forgive someone. Yeah. Actually, this thing can make you kill someone spiritually. 
you may not kill someone physically but in your mind your mind can communicate a lot your heart can speak a lot to people's destinies you can find someone's destiny through keeping a grudge for someone yeah i also used to deal with this you could wrong me you could even say a slight word but it could still hurt me for the next 10 years and i could still keep you onto my heart and come on yes please have you had this addiction um at a certain point of my life i think yes yes yeah mm. uh i'm more like all who know me i'm like I'm an outgoing person and i love people mm. so to me i dealt with an addiction of like i would not be mad at you but i would pretend in your face like i'd be like you know what? we cool we cool yes but deep down in my heart i'm like how could you you misused my trust you get so what you're saying is i used to kill people in my spirit without my notice oh god cuz no like honestly like i tell people when someone does something wrong to me i don't mm. retaliate but you're mm. dead to me you're dead to her yes that used to be me so- That is like the old me. Now this is the new. So me. now you can imagine how many people have ever died in Kamara's life. I don't know how many funerals I held in my head at some point of my life. I know many people have inherited them. <laughs> but let's go with that that she's now a saint. I am now changed. Wow, wow, wow. Saint wow, wow, sanctified wow. in the blood. Yeah, I don't know how many people Jeff had to kill in his heart because of keeping this grudge, but thanks to God that we are all changed people yes. yeah actually there are also some other addictions that people do battle with jeff i guess you know this because we've been in high school we've been at campus do you know this type of addiction to do with pornography uh, i think i know what you're talking actually, about actually <laughs> i've dealt with friends of mine that have this thing pornography masturbation and lust Actually both of these are spirits but they are very big addictions. Someone can't have data for proper things. Someone can't have data that is going to profit his soul, but someone is having data that is going to feed his or her lust by going into a certain pornographic site to watch pornography, to watch this. And the best way to overcome this is the word of God being a lamp to your feet and lighting your path so and the bible says that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth or need you shall meditate or need day and night so the best way to overcome an addiction is the word of god being in you being unto your mouth and meditating unto it so jeff and kama yes we are still on this thing called addictions yes Addiction. and i want you to hope out a certain new there by exploiting more in the few minutes that we are having by exploiting more on this thing of to do with addictions how did it help you out when you met god god so i'm going let me start from where i would have started in the first place because mm. some people have addictions and they don't know that they have addictions First you have to define what is an addiction. An addiction is something you cannot do without. Like when you mm. you you cannot concentrate if it's not there. You cannot have your mind sane if it's not there. Mm. But I think I have like five steps that helped me overcome my addiction. Mm. Number one, you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. You shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Mm. If anything causes you to live without it and makes you a dependent to it, you shouldn't be doing it wow number 2 perfect your relationship with god wow 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 when you perfect your relationship with god you know god speaks right mm-hmm. and when you talk to him cuz at some point i got down on my knees and i'm like you know what god i think i'm done smoking marijuana like this is not who i am and the most hurtful thing in my life was I know I have the hand on God over my life. I know I am called. I know I have purpose. And it would hurt me so much to see the small like the miracles happening around me and then just this one thing taking me away from the presence of my father. So I go down on my knees and I'm like, you know how long I've done this? And no one else can tell me but you. And no one else can. You know the Bible says we do not have we have not a high priest who cannot we cannot 
you know, he cannot relate to our pain. He can relate to our pain. Wow. That is the first reason as to why he came on earth. So there is nothing you're going through that Jesus doesn't know how you feel. He knows you're addicted. He knows you cannot do without this. He knows you have to get it out of your way. So he will give you all the grace you need wow. to do this. Wow. Number three, forgive yourself. Mm. Most people come out and they're like, oh, you know what? I, I can never be a born again. You know, I'm mm. an addict. I smoke marijuana i drink alcohol honey you're looking at a person who did that 24 7 oh god i did that to the maximum of it mm. and trust me i didn't rip anything yes it was cool thing ha- hanging around people who do it and thinking like oh you know what i have this figured out but that was before i figured out my identity right? so you have to forgive yourself first because when you forgive yourself no one around you can use it against you because even wow. if i woke up to you and i'm like you're an addict frank Mm. But you forgive yourself and you know your relationship with God. You're just going to look at me and be like, yeah, but within time, you'll be surprised. Okay? And the other thing is just keep the perfect circle around you. When I say keep the perfect circle around you, I've had friends in my life from the church that tell me, come on, come on, you're better than this. But I would never be the person that would walk up to an addict and be like, quit tomorrow. The grace is sufficient, but I would be lying if I woke up and told you, Frank, quit tomorrow. But you have to first agree and let the people around you agree. They're like, you know what? Let's take it step by step because you don't want it to come back at a later stage of, oh, I woke up and put the weed down. And then three months later, you're frustrated and you're like, you know what? Pass me that joint. You need to forgive. You need to have a circle. I'll be like, okay, come on. You've been smoking like six joints a day. Cut it down to one. And it is in that smoking, that one joint, that the Lord will handle, will help these people around you to handle you. You know, like you could, uh, me personally, in an experience, I would never face people without smoking weed. I didn't have the confidence. But now, I wake up and I'm like, Holy Spirit, we got to work. So you mean, so you mean today you're facing people without... With the spirit of the living God. Wow, without having... I am high on the spirit of the living God. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Come on, come on. So, literally, that is it. Like, your circle. You need people around you that are not going to discourage you. Mm -hmm. People around you that are not going to judge you. Uh Because now, even if anyone walked up to me and were like, that girl used to smoke weed. Trust me, I would laugh at you. I would actually Mm -hmm. laugh with you. Mm -hmm. Because now you're referring to me as the old karma. But this new karma high and sanctified in the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow, wow. And wow, number wow. five, which is like my main thing, get involved in the things of God. True, 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 true. When you get involved, when you have ministry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. how am I going to preach Jesus? Mm-hmm. How am I going to tell them God works? They see me doing all these things. So I think it was me, it was more like get into ministry and that demand of the spirit just comes. It just comes. It just comes. And when wow. you open up, you'll be like me. Wow. I'm, I could say I am gladly an ex-alcohol marijuana addict. Uh-huh. But I'm an addict of the Holy Spirit. Now. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, come on, come on. So that's more like it. Wow, you're making the studio catch <laughs> fire. Yeah. Actually, I get some, I get this spirit is Hitting these waves and someone. It better be hitting blessed. someone and yeah, killing so someone. Jefferson, can you give us some of the steps that, briefly, can you give us some of the steps that you took to overcome these addictions as we are going to get to the last thing in these few remaining minutes? So, me personally, I, choose, I chose to, to renew my mind. Yeah. I said I, could, I shouldn't waste time anymore. Yeah, Because I was also becoming a burden to my parents, disappointing them. They are not seeing what they are expecting out of me. So I was becoming good for nothing. So as a youth there, you shouldn't disappoint your parents. Yeah, they're expecting something much from you, but you are laying them down because of the addictions. But when you, 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 you catch up the fire with the destinies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So, so yeah. I think to add something like Jeff said, time, 
time waits for no man. So, so it will hurt if you move past your miracle because you are an addict. I don't know how many miracles I bypassed when I was an addict, but I thank God I serve a God of restoration that all of the miracles are rewriting themselves one by one by one. So your miracle is waiting. Just wow, yeah, let yeah, go yeah. of the addiction and you're free. Okay, so let us come to this last and final but most important thing. Yes. I guess you guys are already guessing it in your mind because yeah. you've been a part of it. And I want the two of you people to tell us briefly within a few one one minute, each of you, how you've been part of the Stand Up Stand Out conference. And actually, for you that followed it up, the former one for 2020, you know these faces that were iconic. You know the Kingdom Baby, and you yeah, know yeah, 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 Mr. Yeah. Jeff, because they were the people that were seated on our panel like they were one of the panelists that we had last year and these people are going to tell us briefly their experience with a stand-up standout giving you this reason of why you shouldn't dare make a crime dare make a what a crime dare make a what a, a crime. crime of not being a part of it yes beginning with i need peter Woo! yeah we are talking about the stand-up stand-out stand <laughs> There you stand and then you stand out. Uh, stand you out <laughs> and then you stand out. Do it again, do it again. <laughs> you stand and stand out. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, don't, don't crack my rib because I'm not a good dancer. Okay, yeah, Jeff, give us your insight about it. So, stand up. There, mm. there, there were many preachers, so I was a shy guy. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't open. Mm. I could be shy. Because I didn't have that self-esteem in me. But mm. through stand-up, the great preachers could stand and speak to me. And I say, I'm, I'm loved by the Creator. I am a child of God. Yes. Yeah, I, I got to, to understand something. That I am called, I'm, I'm treasured by God. Yeah? Through stand-up, stand-out. So, yes. so I could build my confidence. I could go back to school. That my fellow students could see a new me. Yeah. Yes, because they couldn't see that shy guy who could mm -hmm. shy away. Mm. I couldn't be open to my teachers, but I went back. Yeah, brand new, brand new, brand new. yeah. Because I I had stood out, and stood, stood out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, kingdom, kingdom, baby, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. You know what it is? The stand up, stand out conference. When you see me, the st the conference is here. Yeah. Uh huh. Like. You all know my story. Like I think I realized my purpose in calling through Stand Up Stand Out. The different preachers who came actually made me think I am anointed. I did know. But now wow. I know I'm anointed. I go speaking and prophesying <laughs> over things. You know? So this is me telling you if you're a youth out there and you're looking for your identity in all the wrong places, honey boo pie pie. Make a date with your girl, the kingdom baby. Let me try to show you that the God we got over here is better than the God standing where you are. You know, more like we are in the world, but not of the world. So we want you to be in the world, but not of the world. We want you to walk with the light of Christ. You know how you walk into a dark place and it all beams up? That's your kingdom, baby, right here. I carry the glory and all that glory I got it from. The stand up and stand out conference. Wow, 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 wow. What more else do you want to know about <laughs> it? Don't so, forget your notebook. Don't forget your notebook as it told yes, us. Yes, but before you get your notebook, hit the like button on Res Life Church Ministries. Uh, come Boom. on. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh -huh. Boom. Hit our Instagram. <laughs> Boom. And then on the 28th. 20, hey? <laughs> By the don't, From the 23rd. These don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> these don't, beautiful faces. By the are going to be in your Don't face. forget <laughs> also to set a reminder on your Facebook, set YouTube, a reminder. Instagram. Yes. Set a reminder. Yeah, so it's happening from the 23rd of August to the 29th of oh! August. It's a full week. Honey, a week of glory. Packed. So yes. I want us to tag the stand up, stand out word and we hashtag end stand there. up, stand out online okay, conference yeah. 2021. Three, two, one, go. Stand, stand up, stand, stand out. out. Shalom. Bye.